Turo has a notoriously low retention rate for hosts. And what this means is that people join Turo, they list their car, make a little bit of money, and then they ultimately call it quits. They sell their car and then they consider Turo to be a thing of the past. But the question is, why is this the case? And why do so many people that join Turo end up quitting altogether? And that's exactly what we'll be talking about in this video. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the five biggest reasons as to why I think Turo hosts fail. And if you can avoid these five things, and I think that you can ultimately set yourself up for success on Turo, making your career long and prosperous. So let's get started. Now I've been on Turo since 2017 and over the years I have been basically lurking on the wall of every online group you can think of when it comes to Turo, from Reddit to Facebook to YouTube and so much more. I've learned a lot over the years about what people think of Turo and more importantly why people fail at it. Now this paired with the fact that I've found relative success on Turo gives me a pretty good idea of what works and what simply doesn't. And that's really why I want to dive into the five reasons as to why I think people fail on this platform. But before we dive in if you guys could do me a huge favor and if you could hit the like button and hit the notification bell for the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. Now with all that out of the way, let's dive into the video. So the first reason as to why I think people leave Turo and people end up failing or quitting is because they have unrealistic expectations with the passivity of this business model. I think there are a lot of people out there that join Turo expecting it to be 100% passive, meaning they don't have to lift any fingers in order to make money with the side hustle. Now I talk a lot on this channel about Turo being a semi-passive income stream. And don't get me wrong, I still 100% believe that that's true. But the thing is, there is a big, big difference between something being semi-passive and something being 100% completely passive. There is a huge difference in the amount of work that you have to put into these two different types of side hustles. And if somebody is entering Turo with the expectation of it being 100% passive, well, they're just setting themselves up for failure. I've talked to so many hosts over the years that basically don't wanna do any work. And as a result, they have their guests do everything for them. They have their guests check in the car and take the photos. They have the guests clean the car. And if a guest picks up a car and it's dirtier than expected, well, the host will typically pass the buck onto the last renter saying, oh, I'm sorry, the previous renter was supposed to clean it. I guess they didn't do it. I apologize. And to be honest, this type of mindset and this type of business execution is something that is completely unacceptable for Turo. And it's something that is without a doubt, 100% setting yourself up for failure. The fact is this type of business execution is a bad reflection on Turo and it's not gonna take them long to catch wind on what you're doing. And once they do, they will definitely let you know that they're unhappy and that you're gonna need to change your business practices. And at that point in time, you're gonna need to do one of two things. You're either gonna have to change your business to be a little bit more active, or you're going to have to quit Turo altogether. Not to mention the fact that treating your Turo fleet like a 100% passive business stream is something that's going to set you up to lose thousands of dollars if you get a damage claim, but more on that later. Number two is buying cars at the wrong price. Now, admittedly, I am such a proponent of buying low-end economy cars, cars that range in price from $3,500 to $6,000 max. And I get it, not everybody wants to buy low-end economy cars. Some people want to buy high-end luxury cars. And to be honest, I've had a little bit of change of heart over the last couple of months with my Maserati Ghibli, and I do think that Turo has a time and place for high-end luxury. But the one thing that I haven't budged on, and the one thing I think everybody should follow to an absolute T, is buying cars below market value. Whether you buy a low-end economy car, a mid-sized SUV, a high-end luxury, or even an exotic, the price point you pay is almost irrelevant. What's more relevant is how much you paid in comparison to what the fair market value of the car is. Let's say, for example, you buy a $5,000 car. Yeah, on the surface, that car is a steal of a deal. It's $5,000 and now you can go rent it out on Turo. But if you overpaid for that car, then that deal has now gone out the window. Versus on the other end of the aisle, if you were to buy a $7,000 $70,000 car, but that car was actually worth $80,000, so you paid $10,000 below market value, well then you just got a steal of a deal and that is a great buy for Turo. I'm a big believer that you win or lose your Turo business based off of the price that you buy your cars at. Your price of your car will dictate your ROI, will dictate how much you make or lose during damage claims, and of course will dictate how much you make or lose if a car is totaled or if you need to sell a car. You could definitely make or break your business model by overpaying for vehicles, and I personally believe that this is where a lot of people get this business wrong. They overpay for cars because they simply want to buy more vehicles, they're excited to join Turo, and they don't pay attention to purchase price. Purchase price matters, and how much you pay in relation to the market value of that car will absolutely cause you to fail in this business. On that same topic is over leveraging yourself with debt, and I think that this is something that again can cause people to fail with Turo. This is a really scary thing to get into, and I think that it can lead to you being in a hole that you struggle to get out of. Turo can be an absolute great business model 
McDonald. It can be something that can change your life in so many ways. But if you're somebody that buys more cars than you can afford and something happens with Turo, well then you're in a really dangerous spot. Let's give you a real and applicable example that happened just about two years ago. During the pandemic, a lot of Turo hosts were really struggling, especially Turo hosts in touristy areas. I was pretty fortunate because Dallas, Texas isn't super touristy and the majority of my renters are people that need cars to commute to and from work. But for markets that are more tourist heavy, for example, Florida, Turo hosts there really struggled because their rentals basically came to a screeching halt. So if you were somebody that over leveraged yourself with auto loan debt during this period of time, you could really find yourself in a tough spot because no cash flow, but you're still having to make these payments. That is a bad situation. This exact same thing happens to Turo hosts all the time, whether we're in a pandemic or not. I see all the time Turo hosts that rent their first vehicle, they're bringing in money, they get pumped, so they go and finance four other cars, and they finance a couple of more. And before they know it, they have five to 10 financed cars on Turo. But if the market slows down or if the market gets a little more saturated, your rentals are going to be affected. And whether you're not getting as many rentals or if you have to lower the price of your rentals, that's going to affect your bottom line. And thus that's going to affect your ability to make your monthly car payment. Ultimately, the less debt, the better when it comes to Turo. And whenever I see Turo hosts abruptly leave, it oftentimes is caused by the fact that they've over leveraged themselves with too much auto debt. The fourth reason as to why I see people quit Turo or fail at Turo is because they haven't developed a proper process for how to actually conduct business. Whenever you run a Turo fleet, it's always a good idea to figure out how you can efficiently complete and do every single aspect of the business. From key exchanges to cleaning vehicles to maintenance and so much more, having a system and a process in place is what's going to allow for you to scale your business and also allow for you to have a life outside of Turo. For example, I'm a firm believer in remote key exchanges. This means that whenever the guest comes to pick up your vehicle, you're actually not there in person to meet them. Instead, you have a lockbox or you have some sort of app or you have some sort of tracker on your car that can allow for the person to have remote access to your car. I am a firm believer that this is the only way to efficiently run a Turo fleet. Like I will absolutely die on this hill. And I think that anybody that isn't running a Turo fleet with this method in place is wasting a ton of time and that's a ton of money. Time is money. And if you're spending a ton of time meeting guests, then you are losing money. It just may not be reflected on your PL. Where Turo becomes a semi-passive income stream and a really great one at that is the passivity with it. And that can only occur whenever you develop these systems and these processes. And the great thing is these systems are pretty easy to implement. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to overcomplicate the process, but you do have to take the initiative to develop it and to learn these systems so that you can put them in place. And to kind of circle back the first point that I made at the beginning of this video, which is people treating Turo like a 100% passive income stream. The last and final reason as to why I think people fail is because they do not read the terms of service. And that really goes hand in hand with some of the points that I mentioned earlier. I've seen a lot of Turo hosts that have quit Turo because they get screwed on a damage claim or because they didn't have something covered by Turo or because they submitted a cleaning fee or a smoking fee and Turo denied the claim. And at the end of the day, whenever a Turo host is denied really anything, the crux of it comes down to that they didn't follow the terms of service. Turo has a very detailed outline guide as to what exactly you have to do as a Turo host. And there's also a ton of online resources, both free and paid, that can teach you how to follow the terms of service as well. If you are doing something that is against the terms of service, you're going to lose money. Like in my opinion, it's not a matter of if, it is simply a matter of when. And this hurts the most whenever it's in the form of a total loss or a significant damage claim. And I've seen this happen dozens of times over the years. People that have a total loss, they lose 20 or $30,000 because they didn't take pre-trip photos. They didn't check in their cars within 24 hours. These types of mistakes that can ultimately be prevented by simply reading the terms of service and following the terms of service, they cause people to lose tens of thousands of dollars. And of course, when that happens, the Turo host ends up quitting. Whenever you don't follow the terms of service, whenever you don't do the things that you need to do, all you need is one damage claim and you're done on Turo. You would not wanna do it after losing thousands of dollars. And of course, it would leave a bad taste in your mouth. But the thing is reading the terms of service really will prevent probably 95% of your problem. Now, whenever it comes to failing on Turo, I think that the majority of the time failure is probably preventable. I think that if you follow the terms of service, if you develop processes, and if you're really strategic with how you buy your cars, you're gonna prevent a lot of the issues that could deter you from joining or continuing with Turo at all. 
Now, I'm not to say that this is going to 100% guarantee that you're not going to fail because that, of course, is never the case. But I do think that if you've listened to some of the tips and tricks in this video, you'll increase the odds of your success substantially. Like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.